Hello everyone, welcome to Fakih Medi Center's podcast. This is Dr. Sara Reza, a general pediatrician, and I'm very happy to welcome today Dr. Manal Adi, my colleague, who is also a pediatrician. Thank you, Manal, for coming and joining us today. Thank you, Dr. Sara, for having me. It's very interesting to be here discussing today a very hot topic that I'm sure that Uh, the audience will be uh, excited uh, to hear and it's mainly about the use of chat gpt which is very trendy now i'm i'm sure you heard about many Absolutely. cases Absolutely, this is such an interesting topic nowadays everyone's into ai everyone's on chat gpt asking all sorts of questions but i don't know what that would mean when it comes to healthcare So this can be really uh, important to discuss because it's affecting the new generation that's growing. We don't know what's going to happen on a generation that's raised using chat GPT as a guide. Definitely. Right? Definitely. Yeah. Like imagine uh, imagine some parents for example asking chat GPT about their kids uh, symptoms like my my child is having running nose, my child is having mild temperature, what should I do? I have seen these cases in clinic and I'm sure also you did. Absolutely. And uh, they just uh, try to to find uh, some rapid and quick and uh, easy uh, advices from the chat GPT that's not even yeah. uh, examining the the patient. So So what would you think uh, about that? What would you, how would you handle uh, this in clinic? Well, honestly, I understand parents' point of view. It can be really tempting to just go online, check quick answers about, you know, certain symptoms that your child is having because of, you know, ease of response. Um, they don't use medical jargon, so it's easy to understand for the patients. However, it comes with a lot of cons because your child is not visiting chat gpt physically yeah. he doesn't know your child he doesn't know the background medical history he doesn't know the family history so he cannot put in the full medical picture together so okay. we really yeah. need to to offer personalized care based on our um, interview based on our uh, physical exam and on many uh, other things that chat gpt cannot offer so i think uh, ai cannot replace doctors and uh, Uh, it's essential to go for a doctor's visit when you have any concerns. AI can just be a helpful tool answering basic questions, you know, or emphasizing on a point that was mentioned in the clinic that you need further basic clarifications on. But I encourage patients to always go back to their doctors and ask questions. Yeah, I agree with you. Actually, it's very easy to open uh, a platform, ask, ask it whatever you want, and then you receive an answer. They think... Uh, we can we can uh, truly uh, believe or trust uh, ChatGPT 100%. But uh, remember, ChatGPT is gathering information from different places, and and we cannot trust all this information. As we tell um, our kids, please don't trust whatever you hear or whatever yeah. you see on the TV or whatever you you watch on the screen. You have to come and ask us. The same is advice for the for the parents. Actually, um, you know, even I have uh, encountered uh, some patients coming and they know already the diagnosis. They ask me, we asked ChatGPT and according to them, my child has croup, for example. Uh, and then uh, they have doubt about uh, uh, what I say and we start a debate, then they have to go and ask for another uh, opinion. The parents become very anxious and the child end up going and visiting many doctors, uh, undergoing uh, investigations that are not really needed. As you said, Dr. Manal, you can gather some information or basic information from ChatGPT, but not uh, asking ChatGPT about the therapeutic um, options and about the way of uh, diagnosis. Yeah. Especially in our specialty, children are are really very They are sensitive unique beings. Yeah. We cannot. We have to look at them as a whole. Exactly. We cannot just pick and choose that this has. A child having a runny nose can be an allergy, it can be an infection, it can be a viral or a bacterial infection, right? Chat GPT will not know that, you know? So exactly. I would encourage them to come for the first consultation with the doctor. And if you want to search further on that topic or on the diagnosis given by your doctor, we could take it further yeah. from there. But yeah, I agree. And one more thing, like if you If anyone thinks to ask ChatGPT, I don't think there is anyone accountable if they gave you any uh, wrong information. Sure. At least if you go to the doctor, you ask him, the doctor is accountable of what advises or what treatment or what dosage uh, he's giving you. But ChatGPT is not accountable. Yeah. So if there is any mistake, And it's then your total oh, fault. Yeah. Another point that I'm seeing is that they're even sharing photos of rashes. 
on chat GPT. Yeah. So they take a photo of their child with a rash and fever and they post it there. And what do you think that is? And chat GPT told me that my child has possibly meningitis. For yeah. example, this is like, first of all, do we know where the data is going? Is it protected child data? Is your child's photo going to be used for any other purpose? Yeah, exactly. You know, this exactly. is the first point. The second point is the amount of anxiety that the family has went through because of an image they posted when actually the child has hand, foot and mouth disease, exactly. not meningitis. 100%. Yeah. yeah, you yeah. see, so this is also something they need to think about before posting photos of their children because we don't know where that is going. And this is all new to all of us. So we really don't know what all this data is going to. I don't think it's trustworthy at all. Exactly. For example, a child is allergic to Panadol, right? They go online and they are searching first line of management for fever and they have paracetamol as an option. And instead of Panadol, they pick Adol, which is paracetamol, yeah. not thinking that this is the same active substance because as new parents, you really don't know and you wouldn't look into the generic name of things, but it really can cause devastating uh, results yeah. yeah yeah that's true uh, i think we should work on this as a whole and we should increase awareness so parents really know where to go and who to ask another interesting thing i'm noticing in my clinic is not just the parents are going on chat gpt to look for their children the adolescents themselves nine years of age onwards are actually searching yeah. up their symptoms coming up with a diagnosis, telling their parents and coming to the clinic, doctor, I think I have Oscar Schlatter syndrome because I have knee pain. Yeah. You know, I've seen that the other day and it's scary That's to be honest. Yeah. Yeah. Have yeah. you seen such cases? Yeah. Actually, the, uh, even the adolescent asked ChatGPT to solve the problems. Like I had a problem with my uh, friend. I had a problem with my dad. I had a problem with my whatever. And then they asked ChatGPT for advices. So they just uh, trust trust it blindly and go and do what what uh, they advise and that's very really dangerous very dangerous for such uh, for such uh, age because at this age they are really not experienced uh, sometimes they are shy to ask their parents about uh, many things that chat gpt mentions and they don't have uh, a way to uh, to make sure that uh, if this information is is wrong is right so um, that's really misleading. Yeah, yeah, it's very dangerous. I mean, would you trust your child with a stranger feeding you them all this information? You know, I, I wouldn't. I, I would need to know that person. I need to know the background, wouldn't you, right? Yeah. We don't just, you know, but we are allowing a stranger in the room every day giving them information right yeah remember we should uh, really alert uh, parents chat gpt is not a filter for info for good information or for true information it just gives you everything that yeah. you find it could be true it could be wrong so so please we really need to be uh, very careful about this topic awareness is very important our role as pediatricians and your role as parents is uh, crucial and uh, i'm very happy that we had this opportunity to share this uh, topic today uh, and thank you so much, uh, Manal, for uh, being with us uh, today. Uh, what would you like to, to, to tell uh, the audience? Thank you. I think that patients plus AI plus doctors will bring the best outcome. I think no AI can replace doctors. And for best outcomes, just come visit your doctor if you have any questions or concerns. And let's build that culture for children. Let's, you know, teach them that it's important to go in person for your health. This is the most precious thing they have. Yeah. So please, let's try to take the benefits only from ChatGPT and not risk our kids' uh, health. Uh, please, if you have any questions, um, don't hesitate to contact us. And we are here to serve you in all Fakih Medicenters branches. Thank you.